invite you to listen as I read. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. This benediction is triune in form and has been part of the Christian worship tradition. The phrase is equivalent to God with us. Let me just say that again. The phrase is equivalent to God with us. And I can't think of a better time as this that we need God with I read a letter to my hospice staff this past Wednesday. There's this meeting we have from about 9 o'clock in the morning, actually 8.30 to 12 noon. Now, if you don't think that that is grueling. <laughs> but I wanted, I felt that we needed to hear something, something good. And so this letter was actually put together by a CEO of another hospital system. And so I read it in quote, our nation and the world witnessed a public servant whose sworn duty was to protect and serve, steal the life of George Floyd, whose chilling words were, I can't breathe. And at the end, he called for his mom. There is unimaginable hurt in our black and communities of color all over. Given the long history of such senseless deaths, including the recent killing of Mr. Floyd in Minnesota, and of course I have mentioned Ahmed Aubrey in Georgia and Breonna Taylor in Kentucky, along with so many more. We cannot be bystanders while there is breath in us. Silence is not an option. End quote. So the question is, if silence is not an option for those of us who believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit is with us yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever, what shall we do? What does silence is not an option look like? Well, in my other life, I remember doing this option. I encouraged individuals and each of us in our Christian faith to find someone of a different background and experience that is different than your own and make time to listen and learn from their experience. You see, all of us here today pretty much know each other and we get along. And it's difficult sometimes to reach out to somebody that has had a different experience. And I certainly don't want to be around someone I don't know at this time during COVID. A lot of people are maybe thinking that. But a full 
phone chat or Skype or Zoom or FaceTime may be the answer in these difficult times. At least it's a beginning. Last Wednesday, one of my Southern Bell, I'll just say it, Steel Magnolia colleagues had me in tears and she talked about how she related her own personal story of losing the support of her Southern family over the topic of race relations back in 1960. A Grand Canyon-sized chasm developed in her relationship with her family to the point of non-communication. She said, you know, in tears, she said, I knew then and I know now that wrong is wrong, but sometimes I just don't have the strength or the courage to break ties certainly with my family, many times with my culture, and with the majority of opinions that I have around me. Paul's second letter to Corinthian is addressing false apostles and false teachings. And so Paul here was making every attempt to remedy the situation, as he was called to do as a disciple of Christ. We as Christians must not be silent in the fight for justice for all people. White privilege is real. Differences of opinion in families that result in ostracization is real. All lives matter, that is real. And one life does not matter more than the other because of color, religion, culture, sexual orientation, or physical, emotional handicap. It is not right to tease or ridicule someone who has special needs. It's not okay to tell American citizens or naturalized citizens to go back to where they came from. It is not right to be disrespectful to women because they are women. It is not right to put children in cages. It is not right to use the police to hurt citizens who are law abiding in the process of peaceful protest. And it is not right to use sacred scripture as a prop in our own political agenda. It is also not right to steal and loot. So let us make space to converse in our civil society like people of God so we may live in peace, so that the love of God and the peace will be with us. You see, it is hard today. Last week, Mary asked me when I was doing my pulpit chat, she said, are you okay? And of course, you, you want to say, yeah, 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 I'm okay. But I said, no, Mary, I'm not okay. I'm not okay because I have, between Lou and I, we have five young men of color, black men of all shades. Somebody said, how come our family is so many different shades? <laughs> I can't help that. You have to talk to mama when you get in, in heaven and daddy because they had a love for each other regardless of what either one of them looked like. And they produced this little crazy woman here. You see, we as thinking and praying souls, we know what is not right. We know that there is privilege of others. And sometimes when I was having a conversation with another colleague after my first colleague was in tears because she thought about how her opinion pulled her away from her own family. She was basically put over there. So I talked to another colleague of mine while I was working, 
I do a lot of uh, community information. It's called a bagel booth. And in the bagel booth, we bring everybody together in the community and we talk about things that are stressful or things that are current or we try to give some positive feedback for people that are caregivers. So my friend says to me, oh, and I have to preface this, you folks. Isn't that awful about those looters? Anybody 75 in here? Nope. This is a 75 year old man. I believe he was 75. Yes, he was. Okay. And he was walking towards and he got pushed down, and the, the thud that his head made made tears come to my eyes, and I started to hyperventilate. I said, wow. Then somebody tried to help him, but you know, they were pushed up. You know, it's not the action. Yes, that's bad. But it's the reaction as people of God that we have to know. And that is to help one another. To just, just be there. Just to bend down and find out if he's conscious. And yes, they did call someone to help. But today, ladies and gentlemen, as a woman of color, as your pastor, I am humbled by the group today, as opposed to the group when I was a kid. I am humbled by those individuals that are ready to help, that are ready to march, that are ready to take care of. I know that the Holy Spirit is working in us today. And yes, culture is very difficult, very difficult to change. <laughs> I'll give you an example, macaroni and cheese. Anybody like macaroni and cheese? Yes. All right. In my family, only one person so far can make the macaroni and cheese. And I am trying to encourage my daughters and my sons to just come to my house when I start the stuff so you can be able to do the macaroni and the cheese. Lord knows I don't know what day they the Lord will call me home. But I tell you what, if you don't know how to make the macaroni and cheese, you're not going to have it anymore. <laughs> so, 
It's the same with culture. We can change, we can help each other, we can show how to cook. We can do it for the next generation. That is what we do as people of God. Now, I had a hard conversation with my colleague, the one that said, you know those people that loot. And I said, girl, now you know I'm not for looting and stealing. I don't think anybody is. Anybody here for looting and stealing? No. What we're here is to hear the cry of anguish. Anybody had to prepare their sons to be stopped by the police? I did. Anybody else? Nope. You did. Don't argue. Put your hand at 10 and 2 and tell him what you're getting ready to do. If he asks for the insurance, say, sir, I'm getting ready to get my insurance card. So he doesn't think you're reaching into your glove compartment for a gun or anything else. These are things that I had to make sure my sons knew. Now, of course, I have a lot of sons, and one of them is a frat boy. Anybody a frat boy here? Any frat boys? Oh, Bob, I knew it. <laughs> frat boys have a tendency to first group together as a team, and then they drink, and then they have bad behavior. And I think I have told you that my child, my youngest son, had a situation that was bad behavior. He was out with his frat boys, and he decides to, uh, how do I say this, expel himself on someone's lawn. <laughs> and of course, what did they do? Call the police. There was probably four of them. The only one black was my son, and the only one that got arrested was my son. Well, that taught him something. First of all, you shouldn't have been drinking that much. Secondly, so bad that you have to go on somebody's yard, which is bad behavior. Nobody, I didn't teach him how to do that. And number three, most important. Out of all of those individuals, you're the different one. You're the one that's going to be the cause. You're the one that's going to go down. And luckily, he was 17, I think, at the time. And of course, we were able to have it expunged so he could get a decent job. Thanks be to God, because we have people in high places. Now, that's another thing. I realize that because of who I am and who I know, at that time, there were people in high places that could help. But was that fair? What about another black kid that was maybe poor and didn't have those things? Hmm. And of course, as a, as a pastor, I am fussing to all get out. But the person in high places that really helped my son was not necessarily those two or three phone calls. Yes, that was helpful legal-wise, but falling on my knees to God was the answer for me and the answer for him and the answer for all of us. So when we say this, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It means with you all, not some of us. So today, as you leave this place, and as you look into your own Bible, some people do this. I know some people do this a lot. You know, where you go like this, of course this is up, and you go, and you just kind of let it open. And that's where you're supposed to get the word. 
this scripture is the prescription for how the Holy Spirit works. And we are the mechanism in which it works through. From above, through us, and out. You said, what would Jesus do? Ask that question when there's somebody that is having a tough time. Ask that question when somebody falls over here. Ask that question when somebody is sick, like Pete. Ask the question, what would Jesus do in this situation? And then, no, it's all about love. So ladies and gentlemen, of God, I give you thanks and I give you praise for knowing what is right, for knowing that this place, that this word, that one another is right. I thank you for being people of God. Imperfect, imperfect, but knowing what is right. Amen? Amen. 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 Breathe justice and be okay.